Yo, hello everyone. It is Monday, June 19th, 2023, and in this video I'm going to go over a review of the Asian session trades that I took. Uh, before I get into that, I've been speaking about the Japanese yen futures prior to the uh, Asian setup time, which is 2000 uh, New York local time to 2100 New York local time, and I've been speaking that uh, I was looking for accumulation on the Japanese yen. Of course, that didn't happen, at least not during this session. Um, the Japanese yen fell through and traded lower. Um, I did not trade it, but uh, anyway, so I wanted to mention that the Japanese yen futures did fall through. And I still think, you know, I'd be looking maybe during London, there's going to be a lot of buy side uh, liquidity. So. You know, maybe in a few hours uh, that we might see a long setup on Japanese yen. Um, okay, uh, I'll get to the first trade. So first trade I took was on gold. So gold was a um, Asian silver bullet trade at the very end of the hour. Now, I want to say something. So uh, very strictly applying the hour time frame, is is just getting untenable like oftentimes these um, setups happen five to ten minutes after the hour time frame so what I've decided going forward in terms of trading the silver bullet model is that for the setup hour um, I will want all of my entries to be in the marketplace during the hour but let's say I have a limit order in I will leave that limit order in I don't know, five to fifteen minutes after the setup time ends, just because I'm seeing I'm seeing the setups happen, you know, anywhere from five to thirty minutes, but really like five to fifteen minutes after the setup hour. Um, sometimes it'll just that that'll be when the the market decides to fill the silver bullet trade. So I'm gonna have all of my orders in the marketplace um, by that time, but uh, in terms of you know, always entering during the setup hour. Sometimes, sometimes you know, it's just going to hit, it's going to displace, and then, anyways, um, all of the orders, if they're, if you're going to enter in on a limit order, your order should be in during the setup hour, but don't pull the order. Um, maybe give it 10 minutes after the setup hour. So, first trade on gold, you can see that I did just that. So, this is our Asian. Uh, time frame which is 2000 to 2100 again Michael does not teach this I don't want to claim that he does teach this this is merely using the same concepts that he uh, teaches about the other uh, silver bullet time frames this is when the Tokyo Shanghai uh, Sydney is trading Wellington New Zealand is trading so these are all of your Asian stock exchanges uh, when they open and then when they are trading so the first hour here 2000 now what is that that is when the Tokyo Stock Exchange opens. And I believe it's also when Shanghai, Shenzhen um, is, uh, opens. And then Sydney's been open for a while and is still trading. And Wellington, New Zealand is still trading. So these are small stock exchanges, but nevertheless, they all open at about the same time. So Hong Kong trades during this time. Tokyo trades during this time. Uh, Shanghai trades during this time. Malaysia, all of your Asian stock exchanges are trading during this time. So this is kind of the opening hour for the Asian stock exchanges. So with that being said, um, we had a displacement during the setup hour, uh, a buy side inefficiency that formed, and then uh, I marked that out and we ended up getting filled uh, one tick away from the top tick. So 1963.4, the high was 1963 spot five. So uh, I just basically used this five minute fair value gap. I entered in two gold contracts short at 1963 spot four, got filled, one tick of drawdown, and I took profit um, right before it hit this nearest low. I'm gonna be honest with you, I should have taken, one of the things that I'm still working on is allowing some runners. So I get scared whenever I see the market is starting to retrace and I take profit early. Now, I'm not upset at all about the trade. Like, this is still a profitable trade. Um, but obviously, I left quite a bit of money on the table. Um, one of the things that I see Michael does, and I believe this is what he's doing, is he will, you know, first aim and take a partial at the first low, the first pool of liquidity, the first low. 
But he's also watching to see if Price forms a three drives pattern, so basically one low, two low, three low, and that will be a signal to him to get out of the marketplace. So one low, two low, three low, that's called a three drives pattern, and that might be something that if as you get more advanced in silver bullet trading, I believe that's what he's doing when I've watched him use this model as he's watching for a three drives pattern, one low, two low, three low. So I could have taken one contract off at the low and then let another contract run uh, until I saw a three drives pattern form. That's okay. That's a lesson for the future. So profitable trade on gold. Um, let's see what else I traded. Um, I mentioned that the Japanese yen futures fell through. They're coming back now. There was really no entry here. You know, I will tell you what. If you are just a gangster at this silver bullet model, right there was a volume imbalance on the Japanese yen futures that came in um, came in right there. So it's possible you could have gotten that and then and then gotten this move down. That would have been tough to see. That would have been a pretty advanced trade right there, but it was there. And obviously this is um, when the Tokyo Stock Exchange is open, so we do expect some movement on like yen futures. One of the things about the silver bullet model is um, you the the you have to accurately identify where the draw on liquidity is. I mean, that's really the key. The the fair value gap or the volume imbalance or the liquidity void, the inefficiency is just the entry mechanism. And you might even see inefficiencies, a buy side and a sell side inefficiency. Uh, that's not really the, the key. The key, uh, I mean, they're both important, obviously, but the key is knowing where the draw on liquidity is going to be because this is a draw on liquidity model. So the model is entering you on an inefficiency and aiming for liquidity. So in this instance, for example, there was a volume imbalance there. It would have been difficult, in my opinion, to get this move lower on the end futures. Um, a very advanced trade, in my opinion. Another thing that I wanted to mention in terms of as I improve with the silver bullet model is I like to see the, efficient, the inefficiencies right on the five minute time frame that are like nice and obvious. Um, like really easy to see. Uh, I think that those those provide a, a more stress-free trade. Now it's not necessary. Um, you might see. Oh, I accidentally got filled on a. Hold on. I guess I forgot to take an order out of the marketplace. So I'm going to go ahead and just close that. That was on my top step account. We'll review that uh, Review that in a minute. Um, that was on NQ. Yeah, I guess I forgot to put out my limit long, so I took a $30 loss there for no good reason uh, as I'm recording the video. Um, okay, so we were watching in futures. We're still going to be watching in futures during the London session. Um, I'm still thinking that the yen is going to want to come up and have just a, an impulse move up. But anyways, um, Australian dollar futures. Okay, so this was another trade where excellent entry. I mean, I really had an excellent entry, but my take profit was, you know, suboptimal. Um, I got short five contracts at spot 68665, and I'll show you why. So this was uh, during the setup time frame, we had this inefficiency form and I've already been looking for downside on the Australian dollar so I already had that in mind. Australian dollar obviously it's uh, Australian Stock Exchange is open during this time. It's still going down by the way so you wonder why I trade Asia. I mean yen futures had a big move down. Australian dollar futures are plummeting. Uh, crude oil is plummeting. Copper is plummeting. So I mean yeah, that's why, because it happens, and it happens, and it happens. So, anyways, um, yeah, I was short on this, but I missed out a huge chunk of this move. Um, I basically just covered right here at the first low, and I let one run a little bit further. So, my exits are not ideal yet. Uh, obviously, I missed a huge chunk of this move. I had a fantastic, like, pristine entry and I missed a big part of this move uh, just because I'm not really you know, comfortable with the exits yet. Like I know that I'm supposed to be targeting liquidity, 
But in terms of like seeing an over 1% move down in Australian dollar futures, it's probably drawing all the way down to spot 68020. Uh, that's probably where it's it's drawing to. So, yeah, I missed a big a big chunk of that. Still made money, but I don't know. It's, you know, the other thing that you could be looking for is, again, if you're not sure, take parcels off. This is what I should have been doing. And then watch for a three drives pattern. So what is a three drives pattern? It's one low, two low, three low. So one low, two low, three low. So wait for the marketplace to form that three drives pattern and then uh, take off the last part of your trade at the third low, basically. So one low, two low, three low, that's the three drives pattern. And that's where I should have been exiting the trade. You know, sometimes I'm still learning this model, but anyways, um, I think what did I make? Um, $600 on my Apex account? Fake dollars, fake dollars. Uh, yeah, like 700 So 700 on the Asian session. I've still got 17.5K to go to pass this evaluation account. Okay, so Australian dollar futures, we were in on that. Um, what else? We were in on gold and, oh man, I'm kind of upset about this. Um, I took a 10 point loss on the Apex account because uh, I'm just right here on the one minute time frame. I, I was looking, so up at the five minute time frame, I saw that we'd formed some, we formed a buy side displacement during the setup time on the NASDAQ. And so I got short too at the very first fair value gap. Now, of course, one of the things that I'm going to caution you now is first off, the NASDAQ is a thinner traded instrument. So you just, your stop loss has got to be far away. I, I don't know how else to say that. Like if you're trading the NASDAQ, your stop loss has probably got to even be like a few points above this high, which is why you have to trade the NASDAQ with low leverage, low number of contracts, because this thing can just slip and slide like crazy. The real entry or like the ideal entry was right here okay there was our asian silver bullet right there sorry not am silver asian silver and it was at uh the good entry right where i should have been entered at was 53 spot 75 uh, 53 spot 75 now as you can see you would have been filled on that 16 minutes after the setup time or, let me see, you would have been filled right before the setup time ended. And then and then um, price would have drawn against you. And then you would have caught a nice like 20-point move lower. So I ended up closing this trade because I was taking too much heat on it. Um, I, I, I did take this trade on. I'll, maybe I'll show you on my top step account. Um, yeah, I'll probably show you on my top step account. Um, anyways, like I said, have all of your orders in during the setup time frame, but maybe leave. Uh, sometimes these things are just going to play out like 10 minutes after the setup time frame or within 30 minutes. It should, it should definitely play out. Uh, if it hasn't filled you within 30 minutes after the setup time frame, you should definitely pull your order. But all of your limit orders that you're, that you're going to be using should definitely be, um, in the marketplace during the setup time, but leave your uh, leave your order on maybe 15 minutes after the setup time frame. The other thing about the silver bullet that I've noticed is oftentimes it is going to retrace against you once before it makes the intended move. So just be aware of that. Like it's not always going to do that. It's not always going to retrace against you. Sometimes it's just going to move. Like this Australian dollar feature, for example. No, that actually did retrace against me and then make the move. So that's not a good example either. Um, gold was a good example. Gold was an example where I entered and it just moved right in my favor, right? But sometimes, like, take this Australian dollar short, you enter during the setup time, it's going to retrace against you, and then it's going to make the intended move. So expect one retracement against you is my advice. If you're trading the silver bullet, expect one solid retracement against you before it makes the intended move. So don't get shaken out on the first retracement. Now, if it's really pumping against you, then go ahead and get stopped out. The other thing, folks, is like your stop losses have to be far away. I don't know how else to tell you that. Like these markets can be illiquid and 
I, I would just recommend using lower leverage. Like your stop on this Australian dollar trade should have been up here. Okay, you should have allowed all the way up to where my cursor is for for this trade to play out. And I, you know that's tough. It's it's allowing a lot of drawdown, like we've seen on the Nasdaq. Uh, Ten points of drawdown on the Nasdaq, two contracts is a lot of money. Um, but it never came where you should have been stopped out. And ICT teaches this as well. You know, your stop has got to be far away. Like even Al Brooks teaches this. So it's not um, it's not a new concept. Like you can't use an ultra tight stop loss in your trading, or you're just going to get stopped out. So. Anyways, uh, I probably should have just come into this with one contract and then put my stop where it should have been intended to be, which is up at 50, like 58. And you're thinking like a 12 point stop loss on the NASDAQ, that's a lot of money. Well, it is a lot of money, but, but your trade is not really invalid unless it trades like it could even, unless it closes above where your stop should be. So you've got to allow yourself some margin of error. So use fewer contracts. Um, did I trade anything else? Um, I traded Australian dollar, I traded gold, um, and I traded the NASDAQ, which obviously I took an unfortunate loss on my top step account. Um, okay, sorry, this is my Apex account. Okay, my, my screen capture does not want to work for me at this moment, um, so I'm probably just going to call it a video. Um, I, I did end up making a profit on the... Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's get in there. Okay. Um, in queue on my Top Step account, I realized a loss uh, on my... You shouldn't be trading like this. I want to be very clear. I shouldn't have come in with two contracts. I should have come in with one contract. The entry was at 53. It wasn't at 46. I should have seen that as well. All of that being said, I saw that I had gotten out early, and uh, I ended up retaking the short at 253 spot 75. I covered the first contract at um, at uh, 30 spot 50. And I covered the second contract on a retracement at 37 spot 75. Again, I left a little bit of money on the table. So you can see that I, I re-entered short at 53 spot 75. I covered the first one at 30 spot 50, which is that, which was that prior low. Um, and I was waiting for price. You can see I was drawing out my three drives pattern. And uh, again, I left a little bit of money on the table because I should have waited for the three drives pattern to fully form. That's just something that you learn, folks. So when, it, when ICT talks about targeting liquidity, it's targeting both resting liquidity, and that's true, but it's also going to generate liquidity on the way down, which is why um, if you're trading multiple contracts, take partials off, right? Take partials off at resting liquidity, but wait to see if you see a three drives pattern form against you, and then take your, then take like your final contract off. So... I ended up uh, on the Asian session, um, ended up on my Apex account, ended up on my Top Step account. Um, did I trade gold on my Top Step account? Yeah, same trade, same trade on the Top Step account. Okay, uh, that was it for Asia. I might do a pre-London video. We will see. Um, this has been a review of the Asian time frame silver bullet using ICT concepts. Um, he's got a new video out. I recommend that you uh, go watch it. And y'all have a good day. Bye. Oh, one last thing. Um, if you're interested in trading one of these uh, evaluation accounts, my affiliate is in the description box below. Please make sure to use that. It encourages me to make more videos. Y'all have got to make an income. I'm not trying to swindle you. I'm not trying to uh, pressure you into doing anything you don't want to do. You don't want to. You don't want to do it. Don't do it. But I've got to try and make an income. So. That being said, if you are already going to trade an evaluation account, please use my affiliate. I think I get 15% of commissions on the Apex account. So man's got to make an income. So, all right, that is it. Talk to you later.